Hello fellow humans. Last time, I promised to share some of the lore behind Tales of the Multiverse. I specifically said I would cover the age and scope of the multiverse, the seven supreme deities who oversee it, and the first three crises it underwent. That was a mistake. As I was assembling the audio for the video, it was approaching 30 minutes in length, which is too much. So I'm splitting this current project into two videos, and I'm not going to be so specific with my promises in the future. Here, we will go over the age and scope of the multiverse and the seven aforementioned gods. Next video, we will go over the first three crises. If, like me, you can't stand recordings of my voice, you can read this video's transcript by clicking the second link below, which will take you to a public Patreon post. Anyways, let's get into it. Part 1. The Age and Scope of the Multiverse The multiverse is a vast realm, full of about seven Googleplex universes. If you were to attempt to write this number out, you could fill our entire observable universe with zeros, and it still would not be nearly enough. It is also unthinkably ancient and ever-expanding. Every second, countless new universes are born, exploding forth from the miasma known as the Space Between. It has no edge or wall, but rather is hyper-round, looping back around on itself. While the multiverse is incomprehensibly huge, its contents are significantly less diverse. People, places, objects, and even concepts repeat with relative frequency, resulting in a realm where different versions of the same person, known as doppels, are likely to cross paths if they traverse the multiverse long enough. Not every universe has the same inhabitants, however, and some may even have wholly unique persons or things, but recurring patterns are quickly apparent to multiversal travelers. The scope of the multiverse's diversity is roughly proportional to the diversity of the content that is ultimately brought forth by future DMs and world builders by the time this game is played for the last time. How fortunate! The sea sings to the sailor and the star signals the astronaut. But we are seduced by another dimension altogether, the siren of possibility herself and we are helpless to resist her ruthless call. Nemun the First, the Book of Verses. The Space Between. Between Universes is the five-dimensional realm known as the Space Between. It is unfathomable to three-dimensional minds and cannot be comprehended by mere mortals. Multiversal vehicles known as hyperships often employ perception lenses to organize visual information into three-dimensional analogs, such as a vast sepia cavern filled with pale blobs or a churning pastel realm speckled with water droplets. Given the infinitely many forms of dimensional radiation, there is no incorrect way to render such 3D approximations. While flying through this place, universes pop in and out of sight like blobs that expand from and disappear into nowhere. It isn't just a place, it's, it's all of them. It's, it's the connections, the vibrations. You aren't only flying through a location, you're spatially calibrating the vibrations of your quantum frequency, like tuning into different radio stations. Uh, but you are uh, also sort of traveling through a place it's literally impossible to describe without absurdly complex mathematics. Nalutnas II, the, the Book of Verses The Age of the Multiverse The multiverse is very nearly at the end of the Seventh Age. It is almost 7 AU old. AU stands for Average Universe Lifespan, which is one Google Years. Nefarious apocalyptic activity and spikes in multiversal entropy increase many times beyond the usual at the closings of each age, causing the expansion of the multiverse to actually reverse for a time as more universes perish than are born. It is into this grim paradigm that you are thrust into. Each trial runs the risk of being the one that causes the multiverse to enter an age of decay, 
Given the unfathomable timescales involved, knowledge of each age becomes murkier the further back one goes. It is only through invincible texts from ancient times, knowledge passed down by various deities, and cyclical historical patterns that anyone is able to sketch out a very rough and incomplete history of the multiverse. It's so close now. The seventh crisis. And these will overshadow them all. They're almost ready. Soon the unutterable terror will shatter them. Oracle 7, AU 6.99999, etc. Part 2, The Seven. The multiverse is populated by many beings who can be fairly labeled as gods. They often live in a universe's spirit world or afterlife, and they vary greatly in intelligence, power, and temperament. It is not uncommon for them to go by multiple titles, take various forms, and exist in multiple universes. Sometimes this is because they have independent doppel versions of themselves, and sometimes it is because they themselves are multi-dimensional beings who rule over numerous worlds. The Seven are the mightiest known entities in creation. Not quite omnipotent, they are almost omniscient and never have to ask anyone for their names or histories. Two of them, the Elusive Lord and the Fighter, have enough power to tear the multiverse to shreds if they wanted to, and the others could easily devastate it. No matter how powerful player characters become, they could never even scratch the Seven. Then again, the overwhelming majority of deities are in the same boat. Despite their incredible influence over the multiverse, they are remarkably elusive, preferring to appear to mortals in disguises, and scarcely ever revealing their true identities. Add to this the existence of many more psychic emanations, dreams, or imposters of them than genuine articles, and it is no wonder that some question the extent or even validity of the more almighty accounts of them. Nonetheless, the footprints of the Seven are all over the multiverse, whether it be in the existence of the mysteries or impossibly ancient and lifeless fossil worlds, some over six AU old, full of monuments such as temples and pyramids the size of universes. While not aggressive toward each other, they all operate independently, with no real hierarchy beyond a general respect for the elusive lord as the eldest. The Seven are raceless and sexless, appearing to mortals in whatever form they please. Nonetheless, they do generally stick to their given archetypical preferences. They have many names, but interdimensional priests and philosophers generally refer to the following list. The Elusive Lord, the Balancer, the Trickster, the Lover, the Fighter, the Keeper of Words, and the Silent Oracle. After the shattering, the Seven found themselves in their bodies. They laughed as they understood and loved themselves without shame. The Balancer sought equilibrium. The Trickster sought entertainment. The Lover sought intimacy. The Fighter sought conviction. The Keeper of Words sought inspiration. The Silent Oracle sought the Adventurer. The elusive lord watched and felt it all. And then you were born. Dawn's 1 2, The Book of Verses. The elusive lord, also known as the holder of mysteries, the schemer of life, the cog in the machine, the dripping of sand, the heat of ice, and the eyes that hold, among many, many other titles. The Elusive Lord is the mightiest of the Seven. He is most commonly ascribed the name of Numen. While the other six have occasional disagreements, they all respect the Elusive Lord's counsel on the rare occasions he offers it. He is the least direct when interfacing with the multiverse, and yet the one who has the most potential to move it to his will. Yet he never does so out of selfishness, but only necessity. Above all, he is mysterious and unfathomable. He is often described as a mess of cubist shapes, shifting and morphing like the space between, 
with eyes that pierce the soul, comprehending the totality of their subject, silently urging them on to the destiny approaching them like rushing mountainous waters. He interfaces with reality on a level even deeper than the other six, working tirelessly to prevent reality from spiraling into chaos or stagnating into stillness. Cold are the winds of the queen's white fields, hot the sands of the pharaoh's red tomb, but the blood of his veins is a different color entirely. The most alluring trope is a mystery. He is not a mystery, but mystery itself. Amagi the Sixth, the Book of Verses. The Balancer. Also known as the Judge of Souls, the Perfect Scientist, and the Broker of Gold, the Balancer is most commonly ascribed the name Santulan, typically depicted as a naked hermaphrodite and called by every pronoun with no apparent preference, they are revered by judicial workers, merchants, and scientists alike. They value accuracy and fairness above all, and do not barter with justice. The crime must fit the sentence, and there is no bribing the perfect judge. They oversee everything from final judgments of souls, to laws of nature, to the multiversal mysteries, and much, much more. There is a place for all things in the multiverse, even my brother Taylor. Distasteful as his antics may be, Santula, the Book of Verses. The Trickster, also known as the Everchild, the Clown, and the Teacher of Lessons. The Trickster's motivations and cosmic purpose are the most ambiguous of the seven. Called by the name Tela, he is typically portrayed as a lean, slouching male, but alters his shape more frequently than the rest of the seven. Though, even when he appears as an elephant, he seems worryingly emaciated. Worshipped by gamblers, pirates, vigilantes, and especially duplicitous species, he is the subject of many teaching stories and the butt of many tales, but he is not truly malevolent. As near as anyone can tell, for all his plots and schemes, which can imperil everything from individuals to entire universes, he just wants to have a good time. Then again, perhaps that's just what he wants you to think. Look over there! It's a distraction! Literally everyone looks while I make my daring escape. Taylor, the Book of Myth's Sakes. The Lover. Warning, moderate spice ahead. Also known as the Heart Maker, the Fairy Mother, the Singer of Lullabies, and she who is consistently depicted without clothing, the Lover is revered by persons in every social category there is. Ascribe the name Amari, she is the most commonly worshipped fertility figure of multiversal societies, and, res and resides over every form that affection takes place. That affection... That affection takes... Blah 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 blah. I can speak, I can English, and resides over every form that affection takes. Poets write often of her leisurely walks through beautiful landscapes and how every beast seems to recognize and adore her. While she is most commonly depicted as a female, she is known to change her sex with all the whimsical nonchalance of a fairy casting aside pesky clothing. She is even less picky about her partner's genders, but always sticks to other deities rather than mortals, and never engages in incest. The best evidence for the existence of the Seven is said to be in the startling number of deities who, en who identify as the children of Amare. Uh, there is a joke amongst the gods that about one in ten gods is not a lover of a the, is not a child of the lover. Excuse me, uh, but this is clearly an exaggeration, uh, as as she refuses to engage in incest and yet continues to. <coughs> Uh, quite a lot. Mm. The Embarrassed Monk, the Book of Mitsakes. The Fighter. Also known as the Heart Render, the String Cutter, and the Quickening Pulse, Koga is worshipped and prayed to by such people as warriors, gladiators, and gangsters. He carries a white club said to be made from either the first dragon or the monstrosity featured in The Beasties. 
The fighter does not relish his role as overseer of violence in the multiverse, but sets to his unseen functions with grim purpose. Despite his hulking, scarred, brutish form, he is cool-headed and the most masterful of tacticians, and his counsel is reasoned and designed to minimize the inevitable loss of life. The ants have been warring over continents before you even evolved. But they fight for their lives. The weeds have been stealing sustenance for their seeds, the birds taking eggs for their young. And you stand before me and ask how best to terrorize without thought of your own subjects. The great struggle of war is not to kill, but to live. I call you wretched. Koga, the Book of Teeth. The Keeper of Words. Also known as the Scribe of Dimensions, the First Librarian, the Painter of Skies, and Fathomless Muse, Igama is revered most by scribes, storytellers, and artists of all kinds. She writes everything that ever happens in the legendary Book of All, and knows everything that has ever been written as if she herself penned the words. She writes in all languages with any handwriting, and is said to whisper in the ears of all who dream, inspiring their minds with abstract poetry. Despite her role as a factual documenter, she is known for boundless creativity in all its forms. She never fails to encourage even the most amateurish of artists. Known for her sly smile and dry wit, she usually appears as an elderly woman with a warm demeanor. The way she looks at you, it's like you're sharing this inside joke that no one else knows. You just kind of hope that you aren't the punchline, you know? <laughs> Dime of Atlantis Pay, The Book of Midsakes, The Silent Oracle Also known as The Omen, The Malik of Tragedy, and The Shadow in the Corner, Umhlola appears most commonly before apocalyptic calamities. She is the fatherless daughter of the Keeper of Words. She typically appears as a young woman in simple robes, whose eyes are unseen in the shadow of her drawn hood. She never, ever speaks, but gives hints to avert disaster by drawing people's attention to symbols or visions, or causing the words of others to echo in their ears. Her signature sly smile is far more hair-raising than that of her mother's. If you see her in a dream, you should be terrified. If you see her face to face, you should start running faster than you've ever run in your entire life. The Wretch, The Book of Teeth. With that, we've reached the end of this video. The next video, we will touch on the first three great multiversal calamities, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Three dimensions of space and one of time are not enough. Enter the fifth dimension, the dimension of possibility itself. Enter the multiverse. You guys take care, I will see you next time.